Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and today we're taking a look at this mouse. This is the Dark Core RGB Pro. It's a little bit of a mouthful but we'll take a look at it. Now, if you're just looking for a high level TLDR, this actually is a really nice mouse. Now, whether it's worth the $80 asking price or not, it's actually $79.99 MSRP. Uh, check the links down below in case you want current availability and pricing. There are a couple caveats to this mouse. First and foremost, while it is okay for someone like myself that doesn't have the biggest hands, its shape does lend itself towards somebody with larger hands. So if you have larger hands, continue watching. And also if you like heavy mice, this may be a really nice choice for you because this thing comes in at an official rating of 133 grams, though the actual weight of it will vary just slightly depending on whether or not you're using Bluetooth mode and you have the dongle actually stored inside, as well as which one of the sort of um, side pieces you keep on the mouse. And now before we get any further, we do need to go over a laundry list of tech specs in case you're interested in this sort of thing. This is gonna just read like a spec sheet. So here we go. The Dark Core RGB Pro features a 2.4 gigahertz so-called slipstream wireless technology with a really key feature that's being sort of the marketing point that we're gonna come back to a little bit later. But this thing can run at a polling rate of up to 2000 hertz, which is about a thousand hertz more than most gaming mice on the market right now for example before i was test driving this mouse i was running with a g900 from logitech that runs at 1000 hertz this thing though comes at 2000 hertz though that is something you have to enable in the iq software once it's enabled it just sort of sticks with the mouse you don't necessarily need iq after that but it does default at 1000 hertz so if you want to run at 2000 hertz polling rate you need to go into iq and change that the mouse also does feature a bluetooth mode it's using bluetooth 4 point two for that we feature 18 hours of battery with regular lighting whereas it will get 36 hours of battery life in its wireless dongled mode without any lighting at all and you can get up to 50 hours at least claimed up to 50 hours on bluetooth battery though i'll be perfectly honest i did not use this thing in bluetooth mode for 50 hours to test whether or not i could actually get 50 hours of battery life out of the bluetooth mode but it does seem to get extended life with Bluetooth if you're using that instead of the wireless dongle, which actually does have a use case that we'll also come back to. The sensor itself goes anywhere from 100 to 18,000 DPI, which is absolutely overkill on the high end for gaming. However, it does give you plenty of range in case you're somebody that does like to have a very wide variety of DPIs available. And of course you can set those up in IQ so that you actually have auto recognition depending on what game you're playing, which is a little bit tedious. IQ is still not my favorite utility to get everything set up. I would like to see it cleaned up a little bit. It just, it's just not overly intuitive. I don't really know how else to describe it, but it does function. It does not seem overly buggy or anything like that. It functions perfectly well once you figure out what you're doing with it. And the nice thing about IQ and most of these utilities is once you actually get your mouse set up, whether you're using onboard profiles or you're having it recognize what programs you have open, once everything's set up, you're good to go and you don't really have to touch it after that. You can set up to three onboard profiles and that's really useful if you're going back and forth between different computers with this mouse or maybe you just don't like using IQ whatsoever and you just want the, everything on the mouse itself. And it's also really useful for when you're in Bluetooth mode because IQ is not accessible, at least I didn't see that it was accessible whatsoever when you're in Bluetooth mode and not using the uh, wire connection and not using the wireless dongle. So if you have your profile set up on the mouse, you can just toggle through those on the mouse itself. Useful for Bluetooth mode, especially if you're using it with like a laptop uh, on the side because it is a really nice use case to just leave your dongle plugged into your main desktop and then use Bluetooth mode maybe with your laptop when you're on the go. And having those three onboard profiles then allows you, depending on what tasks you're doing, to swap between them on the fly without needing IQ whatsoever. When you're charging the mouse, you are gonna be using the USB Type-C port. That's a nice inclusion, whereas a lot of the older mice that were wireless that had an internal battery that you would charge via USB, it was usually micro USB. So having the Type-C cable is really nice. It's actually a really nice cable. It's a six foot braided cable. Seems to perform just fine. I mean, it's, it's a cable. It does its job perfectly well. And uh, yeah, wired mode works just like you'd expect it to. 
The build quality of the mouse does seem really solid. It's not creaky or anything like that. We do have Omron switches, which are rated at 50 million clicks, which should be absolutely plenty for you to get through, I guess, this generation of mouse until you're probably someday looking to upgrade to something else or the battery just doesn't hold a charge anymore because, you know, rechargeable batteries of any kind eventually stop holding a charge. Uh, 50 million clicks seems like a lot. I have never clicked a mouse 50 million times that I'm aware of. The scroll wheel is really solid. It does have really nice, distinct uh, steps in it. My only complaint with the scroll wheel is that it doesn't have that sort of infinite scroll that some Logitech mice do. Uh, for example, again, I'm coming from the G900 as my daily driver where I can click a button and then I suddenly have an infinite scroll wheel that has no steps at all. And I don't really realize how much I miss that until I'm onto a mouse that doesn't have it at all. So some sort of future revision, maybe the dark core RGB mice end up with some sort of infinite scroll themselves but as far as just a normal scroll wheel it works perfectly well it has a nice click to it when you push the click button and it has great steps And finally, for those of you wondering, and I know the camera's not really gonna do it justice, uh, but the RGB elements are really tasteful in my opinion. Uh, they're not overwhelming. There's not too much RGB going on. And of course you can always turn those RGB elements off anyways. But at the same time, I think they look nice and it's a good way to get your setup sort of uh, looking a little bit more cohesive by having those elements giving you almost like a splash of color into your setup. So I think Corsair did a good job balancing a little bit of lighting a little bit of color with the sense of having maybe lesser battery requirements than if you put RGB everywhere on it. Uh, it's just tasteful in my opinion. And now I did do some uh, reaction testing with an online website. And I know that's not a perfect way to test uh, the latency of a mouse's clicks or anything like that. But uh, basically this test would give you a red screen and then it would turn green and you would click as soon as you saw it turn to green and it would give you a readout of the milliseconds it took you to respond. Now understand with this, this is gonna be taking into account everything in your system to your internet's latency, to your own latency and the human error that that does introduce. For example, uh, I'm a person, so I can't instantly respond to anything. It does take my brain just a split second to respond to stimulus. Of course, my monitor is running at 165 hertz. There is some variability in my internet connection from one second to the next. So I ran this test uh, with exactly 10 runs per uh, test, and I'll go ahead and throw the chart onto the screen now. But basically, I wasn't really seeing a huge benefit to the 2000 hertz marketing for this mouse. Now, don't get me wrong, 2000 hertz is awesome, and that's a fantastic pulling rate, but we're getting into the point where we're seeing diminished returns compared to the other elements in the system that are giving us latency. If you're online gaming, uh, frankly, a half of a millisecond is gonna be indiscernible uh, compared to a mouse that's running at something like 1000 hertz. It's just not really going to be discernible to the average person. I'm not saying that nobody out there will ever notice the difference, but I'd be surprised if anyone out there ever notices the difference. And the numbers sort of bear that out where the G900 in both wired and wireless mode was virtually identical to the uh, Dark Core RGB Pro in wired and wireless mode. Now I will say, and you probably already noticed it on the chart, the Bluetooth mode definitely does add some latency into the experience. Now, I actually felt like it was a pretty good gaming experience. I played several games of Overwatch in Bluetooth mode and I didn't really feel like it hampered me all that much. But if you're trying to cut latency down to the bare minimum, then you're definitely gonna wanna use the wireless dongle or just wired mode. Now the advantage of the Bluetooth side of things, at least from my testing, was that I saw less interference, specifically with line of sight interference. My Bluetooth module for my desktop PC actually lives under the desk and I had absolutely no issues that I could discern when I was moving the mouse around with tracking or clicking. Everything seemed perfectly smooth in Bluetooth mode. But the wireless dongle mode, not so much. It had to be pretty much in line of sight of the mouse for it to not have 
some sort of uh, stuttery movement or just some problems tracking in general. So if you're planning on using the wireless dongle, then you're definitely gonna want to keep it in some way in line of sight. Now, a great way to do that is to just get a USB extension so you can, or even a USB hub so you can have it right in front of where your mouse is gonna be on your desk. But unfortunately, Corsair doesn't include anything like that in the box. So that's something I would like to see them include, maybe just a little bit of a USB extension so you can run a cable to have the wireless dongle just right in front of your mouse pad because that was by far uh, the better way of using the wireless dongle than just tucking it in behind the, the desktop or even on top of the desktop or anywhere else connected to the desktop it needs to be in line of sight. So this mouse all comes down to preference. At the $79.99 MSRP original asking price, there's a lot of really good options out on the market, but if you meet a couple of qualifications, most notably, uh, maybe you like larger mice and you like heavier mice, then this may be a great solution for you. Also, the inclusion of Bluetooth, while something that a lot of gamers may not use whatsoever, those of you that have maybe a gaming desktop, but also a laptop that you take to class, school, work, whatever, that's a really nice feature to have because you can just flip a switch and suddenly you're connecting to a completely different computer. And if you're just using it for maybe work or school, you definitely don't need that ultra low latency that you need while gaming. So it gives you a lot of great flexibility there without having to carry around the wireless dongle all over the place. Regardless, this is definitely a mouse that should be in the conversation if you have roughly $80 to spend on a gaming mouse. I'm not saying it is the definitive answer to your problems and it's not the definitive mouse you should go with because obviously there, there are some qualifications there, but it is a really great option to consider. So that's gonna be this video. Give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos for my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.